Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about my five favorite Home Assistant integrations. And we're not going to be talking about any of their hacks. That's the Home Assistant Community Store and certainly no cloud. So without further ado, here we go. The first one we're going to talk about is the Tesla Powerwall integration. This is a local integration utilizing our power walls and allows us to see information for our solar as well. So on the surface, it doesn't sound that exciting, but the integration with Home Assistant is superb. I really like it. So there's, you know, different entities here for each of our power walls, as well as the overall home, um, you know, processing and what's going on with the energy here. So within those, you can go into the different devices and look at different entities. So I'll just go to the overview of all the entities and there's 68 entities for, for four power walls plus the um, overall home that we have set up. And for the most part, they don't really look overly, you know, interesting. You see different charge information, different import export information, but that's where Home Assistant really, you know, takes us to the next level. So I'm going to jump over to the energy tab and let you see what that looks like for this integration. Um, so you can see the full energy distribution, what's coming from the solars, when's that going to the home, when is it going to the grid, or when it goes to the power walls. And then what energy is being pulled from the power walls and being supplied to the home when we don't have the solar, you know, if it's nighttime, that type of thing. Um, you also see the energy usage throughout the day. So you have an hourly by hourly. There's a solar production with a prediction in here. Um, you have, you know, the amount you return to the grid or use from the grid in um, a, a little uh, graph there. And then you have the uh, self-consumed energy percentage as well. So what percentage of the energy did you generate and use on property rather than sending back to the grid? and how self-sufficient are you? So how much of the energy that you utilized in your house actually was produced on your property rather than being imported from the grid? So that's all you know, very quick and easy to see. And then it also, if you put in your energy prices, so we have time of use pricing, so I have the different prices in for the time periods, it will track all that information and let you know each day um, how much you bought from the grid or how much you sold back to the grid, including the dollar amounts. So this right here, this dashboard for the energy is really what pushes it over the top for me and gets it into my top five integrations within Home Assistant. It's just that level of detail, not to mention some of the automations we have there. Like when the power goes out, we can track that within our home, get notifications through Home Assistant, you know, announce it on the Google um, devices. Um, and whatnot. So definitely a great integration and one of my top five. So number four on my list is the HomeKit device integration. And we're not huge on buying the Apple HomeKit devices throughout our house, anything like that. But I will say it gives you a solid set of performance and it keeps everything local. And again, that's one of our goals here is to keep everything local, keep it off the cloud. So utilizing the HomeKit integration with the HomeKit device, then you have that local um, execution on your devices that you purchase there, and it opens it up to some of the device types that aren't you know, readily available in um, a local integration, otherwise in Home Assistant. So the, the good example that I have here is our garage door openers and the integration here, so we can open garage door one, two, or three, and that's you know um, local integration here. And I did make a video about this one. So if you want to see that, it would be up top here. Um, I'll put a card up there and you can click on that and watch that video. Um, but definitely the HomeKit device integration is key to making sure that you have those, you know, peripheral um, integrations that are locally executed and don't have to go out to the cloud because Apple HomeKit has a lot of devices. Some of them are a little bit pricier than, you know, the, the uh, other local integration devices but definitely worth the money when you need that execution and reliability to um, always occur as you expect. Coming in third on my list of integrations in Home Assistant that aren't hacks or cloud-based is the Lutron Cassetta integration. And you're probably surprised if you watch my channel a good bit because you know I'm a huge fan of Lutron Cassetta. 
Um, but I do have them coming in a third here, and that's because you need that separate hub. So similar um, setup to um, HomeKit, meaning that you have the local integration and the reliability, um, but you do have that separate hub, hub with the Lutron, and that's probably you know the biggest negative that, it, that I have for that. Um, but they work excellent. You know, it's one of the only devices that I've never, ever had a problem with in our smart home. Um, we have 74 devices set up. Uh, another issue is there's a limit, a hard limit of 75 per hub. So we're obviously pushing right against that at this point. Um, but we have tons of, tons of um, you know, devices here. Some of those being dimmers or uh, switches for ceiling fans. Um, in addition to the remotes. And I, I sort of wish the remotes didn't count against your 75, but they do. So here we are with the integrations here, and we have all kinds of automation set up for those, um, motion or humidity-based automations, time-based automations, lots of different things set up here. And like I said, just always works. And that's the biggest thing for Lutron Cassetta, and that's definitely what pushed it so far up my list to make sure that we have that within our home. And I highly recommend you have Lutron Cassetta in your home. Now we're really getting to the core of a smart home. Coming in second on my list is the Z-Wave integration. So this is the best integration for grabbing some, again, some auxiliary type um, devices that maybe don't fit into our number one integration that'll be coming up here, really the, the heart of our smart home. Um, but Z-Wave, it really does a great job of grabbing some, some of these auxiliary um, integrations. So this would be like our firefighter, which is um, a device that sits um, on our ceiling. It's just a little device, um, sits on our ceiling right beside our smoke detector, and then you know listens for the sounds of the carbon monoxide or the smoke alarms, um, and, and informs us about that, as well as our Econet Bulldog um, water shutoff valve robot. And that one, again, not something we can get um, with our number one priority integration here, um, but definitely a, a great device and really needed within our home to give us that peace of mind of being able to shut off our water to our whole house if we do have a leak somewhere that it's likely, you know, due to the fact that there's a pipe leaking or something and shutting off the water would be beneficial. So there's some other devices in here as well, uh, like our door locks, and we have some leak sensors that we have set up that way. Um, and, and also uh, some smart plugs, you know, set up that way. So we do have a variety of devices, but for the most part, these are geared towards the devices that don't fit in with, with our number one integration. And our number one home assistant integration within our smart home, and should be yours as well, Zigbee, of course. So we don't have quite as many Zigbee devices as we do Lutron Cassetta, but definitely it's the core of our smart home. We have 67 devices, so just, just shy of our Lutron Cassetta integration, but it's key here with our open-close sensors. We have plugs, we have leak sensors, we have motion sensors, just you know, a whole bunch of different, you know, a plethora of different types of devices within our Zigbee integration. And these are really the core of our monitoring, um, you know, the open-close, so if you know, a door opens or closes or a window, um, you know, garage door where we used to use those instead of the, uh, the mirrors. You know, we had all kinds of integrations with those. The motion sensors, they're pretty, you know, standard. You know, if you see motion, turn on lights, or if there's no motion, turn things off, that type of thing. But we also utilize the humidity from those. So lots of reporting items that you can utilize there. You can utilize temperature from a lot of the Zigbee devices. The uh, plugs that we have, they have power monitoring in most instances. So we can monitor the usage of appliances or you know electronics that are plugged into those and see when they're on or off or kick them on or off um, like we do with our dehumidifiers. So just a plethora of uses for those Zigbee integration devices. And really, like I said, the core to our smart home, even though it's not quite the uh, same number as our Lutron Cassetta, it's definitely key to making our home, our home operate and function the way it should. So we integrate those throughout and we're really happy with it. So that should be your number one as well, in my opinion, because there's just so many devices and the cost is really there as well. You have a lot of companies such as Acara, you know, really in there with the low priced um, items. So that's how we have all of our, our leak sensors as we found those on Amazon really cheap and purchase those and they integrate great. Um, we utilize the Acara plug that repeats really well for those. I will mention that 
If you have Akara devices, I recommend getting the Akara plugs rather than another company's plugs because they tend to be a little picky about which, which devices they use for the repeating of the mesh network. So make sure that you have that in mind if you go that route. But you really just, you can't sleep on Zigbee. You, you have to be involved with that integration, in my opinion, if you want to have a great dynamic smart home with that local integration and not break the bank. Because who wants to blow all their money if you can get a great integration and save your money? I hope you enjoyed today's video. Make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss the next videos that I'm going to put out. We're going to focus more on some home automation and energy savings and those types of things in those future videos, as well as some requests that I've received from viewers like you.